Now we'll talk about the number line and addition. And it turns out that addition can be pictured visually as movement along a number line. And this idea is very, very simple. But being able to get this visual picture, this mental image in your mind of a movement along a number line is important and will be very, very helpful down the road. So let's look at some examples. It says here at the top, adding two numbers can be pictured as movements along a number line. That's the main idea. That's what we're doing here. We'll do 2 plus 3 first. Now obviously you know that 2 plus 3 is 5. What you want to get now is this mental picture. You start at 0. And this 2, that's a positive 2. That means we go 2 to the right. And then plus 3 means we go 3 more to the right. And you can see those. From here we went 1, 2 to the right. And that put us at that, at that point. And then from there we went 1, 2, 3 to the right. And so we ended up at the 5. So 2 plus 3 equals 5. Now, of course, you knew that 2 plus 3 is 5. What you want to see is that this little equation corresponds to this picture. 2 plus 3, in other words, starting at 0, going 2 to the right, and then 3 more to the right, uh, makes us end up at 5. So 5 is the answer. Negative numbers correspond to movement to the left, which is the negative direction. All the positive numbers on the number line are over on the right side and all the negative numbers are over on the left. So it's common to think of this way to the right as the positive direction and this way to the left as the negative direction. So this example 6 minus 2, the 6 means starting from 0 we go 6 to the right and that puts us here at the 6. And then the minus 2 means we go 2 to the left. That's a, you can think of that as a negative 2. We're going in the negative direction. So from there, 2 to the left puts us back here to the 4. So 6 minus 2 equals 4. And again, you know already that 6 minus 2 equals 4. You should be able to do that in your head in a snap. Uh, what you want to do now is understand that this little equation corresponds to this picture. 6 to the right minus 2 means we go 2 to the left puts us at the 4. So 6 minus 2 is 4. Okay, look at this next example. 3 plus 0. Adding a 0 corresponds to no movement. So we start with the 3, and that means we just start at 0 and go 3 to the right. That puts us there, obviously, at 3. And then plus 0 means we don't go anywhere. We don't go to the right or the left. So we just stop there, and that's our answer, 3. 3 plus 0 is 3. Again, if you know anything about addition, you know that that's the case. But what you're getting now is this visual image right here. And then 4 plus negative 4. Adding two opposite numbers results in one movement and then an exact opposite movement. So the 4 here corresponds to 4 to the right. That puts us right there. And then the negative 4 corresponds to 4 to the left. That puts us right back where we started at 0. So 4 plus negative 4 is 0. Now, these little pictures lead us to some more ideas about real numbers, which we can formally state as properties of real numbers. But just as important as understanding these properties is making sense of these little visual pictures. Being able to draw mental images like the ones you see here is going to be really helpful uh, in the very near future. But let's look at these properties of addition here. The identity property of addition, we can say that there is a real number 0 such that for every real number a, a plus 0 is equal to a. So there's some number that, um, that, that we call 0 that when we add it to any number, the result is that same number. And again, that seems pretty obvious, but we state that because it helps us to clarify exactly what 0 is. And 0 is extremely important try doing math without a zero and you very quickly run into a lot of difficulties. So stating this is worthwhile just because it helps clarify what zero is. We could also add, if we really want to be complete, we could also add that zero plus a is equal to a, but that should be clear if you understand that when you're adding the order doesn't matter. So this is the main idea. You can state it either like that or like that. Either way it helps us to see that adding a zero doesn't change anything. And we'll also state what we call the property of opposites. And that just says that for every real number a, there's a unique real number negative a 
such that this can be the case. A plus negative A is equal to zero. In other words, if you add a number and it's, and it's opposite, then you always end up with zero. And again, that seems pretty obvious, but it's worth stating because it helps clarify exactly what negative numbers are. And negative numbers are important too. And again, you could state this either way. You could say negative A plus A equals zero. Either way would be the same thing. If you add a number and it's opposite, you end up with zero. And last of all, we'll mention the property of the opposite of a sum. For all real numbers A and B, the negative or the opposite of A plus B, and that's what we mean here by the opposite of a sum, that's the opposite of a sum. Negative A plus B is equal to negative A plus negative B. And a lot of people, to keep this negative plus and negative sign from getting confused, it's common to put parentheses like that. So negative A plus B is equal to negative A plus negative B. And you can think of this as distributing a negative one across the things that are in parentheses here, whether those are numbers or variables. In other words, you could think of this as negative one times a plus b. And you've probably seen the distributive property. We'll cover it in more detail um, soon, but you've probably seen it before in pre-algebra. Negative one times a plus b is going to be negative one times a plus negative one times b. So you can think of this right here. This negative sign out here gets distributed to the a and the b. Or it's like distributing a negative one to the a and the b, like that. Now these ideas that we've gone over about the number line and addition, again, if these seem obvious to you, that is good. These ideas are just a summary of how numbers work, and specifically when we're dealing with addition. If, if you understand these ideas, then you have a good grasp on how numbers work, which is obviously a fundamental thing that you need to continue your study of mathematics and algebra in particular.